What's going on Minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and today I'm going to answer one of the most asked questions I have on my channel and that is what is the difference between all these different collected editions? So I'm going to mainly focus on Marvel and DC uh, and if you guys want me to I'll throw in some other stuff from Dark Horse or Image later on. But for now it's Marvel and DC and looking at the different sizes and what they really are. So stay tuned! So I'm sure you looked at the thumbnail and you were like, what the hell is this video going to be about? Well, this is kind of a video for beginners because this is something that I've seen a lot in my channel. A lot of comments come in asking, saying I'm new to the game. What do I need to know? What are the differences between all these different kinds of formats? Is it better to get an absolute? Is it better to go for the omnibus or just stick to the trades or hardcovers? So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about are your standard trade paperbacks. This comes from both Marvel and DC, as you can see, right here. Uh, they are the exact same size. These usually contain, I want to say usually, unless they're really special, five to six, sometimes four issues, sometimes seven, uh, of a said title. So usually there's a volume on the spine, volume one, as you can see there. And Extermination was a one-shot, so it doesn't have a volume. The contents are usually, usually, I want to say, in the back. Like, this contains Exterminations 1 through 5, telling you who wrote it, who drew it. And, again, with DC. Contains Justice League Dark 1 through 3 and 5 through 7. They are your size of a comic book. All right, this is a com this is a Marvel comic book. And they are the same dimensions, the same size. Maybe the trim is a little bit bigger sometimes because it's DC and Marvel. But yeah, you can tell here. Maybe just a little taller if you're DC. The pages are usually, especially your newer trade paperbacks, um, are glossy. So they're really nice. And the art really pops. They're kind of thick, glossy paper. And then sometimes they're like this. Not so glossy, but thick paper nonetheless. Uh, the prices of these usually range anywhere from $14.99 to $19.99, depending on the content or how much is collected. For example, this one is $16.99 and this one is $17.99. And it really doesn't matter where you get it. Sometimes you can get them in in-stock trades, you know, 40 to 42, 45% off Amazon. But the retail price of these usually are from $15 to $20. Now let's look at the thicker trades and what they contain, why I put them here. Here's one of my favorite lines. This is the Epic line. And this is one of my, damn it, why did I choose this book? Uh, this one breaks my heart because they discontinued volume three. Volume three of Kyle Rayner um, was canceled, which sucks. Uh, so sometimes they're creative, creator centric. Like uh, you could have Flash by Mark Wade. Green Lantern by Jeff Johns, Flash by Mark Wade. Uh, I said that already. I meant Flash by Jeff Johns. So, but then this, then sometimes it's by character. So this one is Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner, and collecting issues. It should tell you in the back here. Uh, Green Lantern forty eight through fifty seven, and New Teen Titans one sixteen through one seventeen, and Rebels number one. The creative team: Ron Mars, Daryl Banks. So why is it a volume one if it kicks off with Green Lantern 48? Well, that's really quick. For example, in this book, that is the beginning of the Kyle Rayner story. That's when Emerald Twilight begins. When Hal Jordan goes crazy and kills the Green Lantern Corps, he becomes the Parallax. So somebody else has to become the Green Lantern. And this kid right here, Kyle Rayner, becomes the new Green Lantern. So that's why it's a volume one. I know, the numbering system sucks. That's why I do comprehensive reading orders. I mean, Marvel's a little bit better, especially since they started this wonderful line called the Epic Collections uh, under Siege. These st I'm going to do an Epic Collection video explaining how these started and um, which books. I, I know you guys have recently seen uh, my out-of-print Epic Collection videos, or maybe you have. But what I like about these is that there is no number on the spine, which is nice. The number's on the back, which is probably one of the smartest moves. That way these can fit right along with the trade paperbacks. But I'll talk about more of that when I talk about the actual epics and the beginnings of them. Uh, the contents of these books right here are back here. Tells you how much. Uh, what I wanted to point out was the price difference. For example, this Kyle Rayner book is thicker as you can see. Uh, collects over 13 issues. So this one's 
$30, $29.99. And this, usually the epic stuff is $39.99. But you can see the content of the book and how much it collects. I mean, we're talking 264 to 277, Annual 15, which is a thick book, Annual 39, or Alpha Flight 39, and West Coast Avengers Annual 1. Um, as far as the paper quality, it's not quite as nice as the thinner trades, but I really like it because I think older art like this benefits from this kind of paper. It's, it's a little thinner. It's not as glossy, but I think the color and the art really pop out. And look how thick that is, right? Again, Kyle Rayner. $30, $40. Let's look at this. The paper quality of this is nice and glossy. So it's a little nicer than the Epic. It's probably why the price is $30 instead of $25, or $20 for that matter. And this is a book we're going to talk about on Old Reader, New Reader, so I don't want to skip too much through here. But you can get an idea of what this kind of trade paperback is. Now, let's look at the standard hardcovers. Um, you may have noticed, I know this is one of the biggest questions I have. It's like, why is this hardcover only 20 bucks, and then these hardcovers are $30? Well, that's because we're talking about the difference between a standard hardcover and an oversized hardcover, right? So let, let's compare this. This is both a Marvel and a DC book. Like I said, DC is just a tiny, 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 tiny little bit taller. Uh, the dimensions are probably just as equal on this right here, right here. But let's compare it to a trade paperback because no matter how much they try to fool you, I don't think they're really fooling you. It's just more of a trick of an eye. They are the exact same height as these right here. It's just this backboard is taller. You have just a little bit right there and at the bottom. But the actual book itself is as tall as these. So if you were to make this into a hardcover, it would look like that. And the hardcover would be up to here and I'm sorry, I'm down to there. The reason I know this is because I custom bind books. So I know that if I rip apart this, it's the same thing as ripping apart this. So if I wanted to make one custom bound of Green Lantern or the story of how Jordan going crazy and becoming the Parallax and it ends with zero hour, I know I can have this and be the exact same size of the contents in here. True story. And again, the size of comic books. Now, the listings don't help, though. Whenever they're on Amazon, you see them and you're like, oh, a hardcover. This is the hardcover I need. What usually helps with what you're looking for is the price. So if the retail price is like $25 for a book, and both of these are $24.99, then you're probably looking at a standard size hardcover. Look at the content, because usually an oversized hardcover has twice as much. So let's say, for example, this collects Amazing Spider-Man 692 to 697 and Avenging Spider-Man 11. So about six issues, right? And this collects zero hours, zero through four. Well, it's about five issues. If these were oversized hardcovers, they would be twice as long. So probably having 12 to 13, sometimes 15 issues. And let's look at those next, right here. These are the oversized hardcovers right here of a Marvel and DC book. This is the new Rebirth Deluxe Editions. And this is the new Thor, the Mighty Thor run collected by Jason, A from Jason Aaron. Um, again, so these are definitely oversized. These are as tall as the omnibuses, which I'll compare to here in a minute. But the difference is the price point and how much they collect. These are twice as big. So uh, usually collecting 10 issues to 15, like I said. So this one collects issues one through eight of Thor and annual one, which is big. So the price point of this is $34.99. And this collects uh, Detective Comics 950 to 962. So 13 issues. Again, the price point being $34.99. The paper quality on these are really nice. They're usually glossy. The binding is usually, on these kind of books, they're usually sewn binding. And like I said, the art is oversized because you're no longer looking at a standard hardcover like this. So it's that much taller. And the same thing with Marvel. It's that much taller. The dimensions in the two oversized hardcovers are identical. So the same thing as Marvel. Taller than the standard hardcover. And the price is different. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're looking for these things. Because these things get confusing. Especially Jason Aaron's store. Hardcovers. Standard hardcovers are still available. But the oversized hardcovers are out of print for volume one. And I believe volume two now. Of um, 
Thor, God of Thunder. So that's, that, that's I think, what sparked a lot of the questions. Now let's look at omnibuses. Here is a Marvel omnibus and a DC omnibus. By the way, I am not flexing my Annihilation omnibus. Let's just say I know some things. I will announce it on the channel as breaking news as soon as I get the go ahead. So stay tuned to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and like right now. And all the poor schmucks that are missing out for not watching this beginner's video, they're really gonna be sorry. So here is the Omnis compared to the hardcovers. Exact same height, right? That's why a lot of people are happy with the deluxe editions of the Rebirth line. Or a lot of people decide not to upgrade the oversized hardcovers, like when a Jason Aaron Thor is announced. But the price is a huge difference. These are the high-end books. These are like the caddies, I guess. They are usually retailed anywhere from $99 to $150. We've known some thicker uh, hardcovers. For example, both of these actually are $125. Both Annihilation and Green Lantern Volume 1. Uh, the contents, again, are in the back of both books. For the most part, they do this. Both the oversized hardcovers and the Omnis come with a dust jacket. And I'm sorry, the standard, usually the standard hardcovers does as well. Marvel was trying out new things with the all new Marvel line, but they didn't have uh, dust jackets, but they all do now. So if it's a hardcover, even if it's standard size, most of the time it will come with a dust jacket. I love when they have different artwork inside. So like I said, a difference being, holy shit, you get the entire story here. So Annihilation was previously collected in three oversized hardcovers. That's three. Three of these equals one of this. They put them all together and made an omnibus. Hell yeah. Happy, right? Well, now both are out of print. But like I said, stay tuned to the channel. I promise I will unleash the news as soon as I can. Um, and then Green Lantern was previously released in hardcover, standard hardcovers, and then trade paperbacks, and eventually an omnibus. That's usually the way they do things. They will um, they will release a trade paperback, and then an oversized hardcover, and then an omnibus. Usually, every once in a while, they'll release an oversized hardcover, then a trade paperback, and then no omnibus. So, you know, you never know. Now, uh, there are other lines available, especially from Marvel and DC, like the Adamantium Collection or the, the King Size Kirby books, but I don't have any of those. Those are more artist books. Those are huge, by the way. Um, but DC's biggest line they have is the Absolute line. They all come inside of a slipcase. Usually the books are leather bound. Sometimes they have dust jackets, sometimes they don't. And let me just show you the trim size comparison here. Uh, now, what makes one get this? To me, at least this is my opinion, the art has to be so amazing that I want it oversized, more so than an omnibus format. Or the story, much like Sandman, has to mean something special to me that I'm like, okay, this is the nicest way to collect this. If you're talking, you know, premium editions, this is the best way to collect this stuff. And let's get it out of its slipcase. The contents are usually in a nice little... These come sealed, by the way, when you buy them new. So the contents of the book usually come in a little piece of paper that tells you what it is. These are $100 to $150 sometimes, much like an omnibus, but has a lot less issue. It's because the art is oversized compared to an omnibus or an oversized hardcover. That's why they're able to charge that price. So if you like oversized artwork, or if the story, like I said, means something so special to you, you have to get it in absolute format. That is the way I, I would recommend that they all usually, I don't want to say all, they all most of the time come with a ribbon. And like I said, the, the quality of the built of the book is leather or fake leather, but whatever. But let me show you the art compared to an omnibus. And here it is compared to the Annihilation omnibus. You see how much taller it is right that's how much more art you get so that's why i enjoy it usually if it's got alex ross's name or jim lee's name you bet your ass i'm going to get the absolute version and like i said marvel has the platinum editions of x-men and uh i think marvel's had one too and those are actually taller than this i just don't have any to show you guys those are those are like a lot more expensive too i think those are 200 dollars and that is it. And I hope I was able to answer your questions that you've had about the different sizes or the content that's inside of these or the quality of the pages. 
So leave those comments down below and suggest other videos that you would like me to tackle. You all know by now I love replying back to each and every comment. So yeah, just we can have a chat in the comments down below. Please think about subscribing to the channel because we have tons of content just like this. And don't forget to hit that like button. We also have a Patreon now. So if you enjoy the content on this channel, please think about becoming a Patreon. We have exclusive things there. And again, thank you all for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.